How would you look at that? We're gaining more units than we're losing. Hmm, isn't that weird? Oh no, it's almost like we can use enemies now to just fuel our army rather than losing troops. Oh no, I feel like we've become slightly too powerful now. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today you join me in Heroes Hour, which is a game that I'm sure pretty much all of you have never heard of. But the game you will all have heard of is Heroes of Might and Magic 3. Now, what is this game? This is basically Heroes of Might and Magic 3 if the combat was done via auto battling with spells. It is legitimately amazing. All of those new Heroes of Might and Magic games that look like someone's just buying assets off of the Unity store, you can just forget about those and instead enjoy Heroes Hour, which is beautiful, amazing, perfect, and of course, completely filled with overpowered necromancy exploits. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be playing a very, very balanced game of Heroes Hour as we try and prove why using necromancy only is completely and utterly overpowered. Trust me, this game is amazing and you're gonna love it. So, without further ado, make sure you sat back, relaxed with a nice warm cup of tea in hand, and if you're feeling especially fantastic, you can even like this video. Now, let's dive into the fun. Anyway, it's time for us to begin a brand new game of Heroes Hour. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna play on a nice large map, because large maps are fun. And we're gonna be playing on the Lost Idol map. It's a huge map, ladies and gentlemen, and we're gonna be playing off against two other factions. Now, today, we're gonna be playing as a very important faction. There's a load in the game. You've basically got, like, Nighty Boys, Druid Hippie Boys, Boys, Magic Carpety Boys, Flamey Boys, Orky Boys, Snaky Boys, Stuff Boys, Water Boys, and Rock Boys. Now, today we're going to be playing as Decay, which is basically Necropolis from Heroes of Might and Magic 3. Like, legitimately, their entire unit roster is just Necropolis. It's amazing. Now, of course, you need to pick your starting hero. You've got a fun few options. You've got Bonehead, you've got Fear Cap, but we're going to be playing as Hard Soul for one very important reason. Hard Soul starts with two lovely powers. Curse, which basically allows them to curse enemies, and when enemies enemies are cursed, they'll turn into undead creatures when they die, which as you can imagine is a very easy way of gaining troops for free. And also there's necromancy, after combat it allows the hero to spend some mana to raise some defeated creatures as undead soldiers, but of course you don't really need necromancy when you're just putting all of your points into curse. So it's time for us to load up a fun game with hard soul. Alright, I have no idea who we're going to be playing up against, but it should be good fun. We'll start with the starting development of a capital, there we go, just so that everyone has a nice faster early game. And you know what ladies and gentlemen, let's begin! Now it's time to explain why undead factions in video games are either horrifically overpowered or just completely and utterly terrible. And the reasoning is simple. A good undead necromancy faction should be able to raise the dead. But if an undead necromancy faction can raise the dead, it does create problems. Mostly the fact that they can slightly raise too much dead. And if other people are having to, you know, just recruit normal units, and one guy is able just to summon units out of thin air, it can create some large issues. Oh, and because our capital has of course grown to a township, we can have a grand army, there we go. So allows us just to have some more units at the end of every week, which is lovely. And now it's time for us to do some undeady boy stuff. So welcome to our capital of Mortopolis. It is just like Heroes of Might and Magic. There is a week and once a day you can build an upgrade in your town. And at the end of the week, all of the units which you can recruit based off of your buildings, restock and you can hire them again. And now Necropolis has a few fun systems, like for example, anything you kill arrives at the Soul Beacon and then over time is eventually turned into free units for you to use. It's really, really fun and can get even sillier with something like the Throne of Death, which is the undead special ability. Allows you to turn living things into dead things. I know, what a magic power. No one else can do this, unless, you know, they have a gun. Now what we're going to do is just open up by upgrading our skeletons to superior skeletons of the Bone Guard. These are basically skeletons with a shield and fight a little bit better. So we'll upgrade all of our boys, hire them into our army, and it looks like we're good to go on our first adventure with our hero. Now, once again, it's Heroes of Might and Magic, so you have limited movement around the map, but luckily you can also see how difficult fights are so we know that this fight up here is going to be easy. So we're going to go up here, secure this resource deposit, and we're going to be able to start our adventure. Now, welcome to the combat, ladies and gentlemen. It's very simple. As you can see, we have 26 skeletons, 5 wraiths, and 5 zombies. And you think, oh, it's a little bit boring because they're represented by just one guy. Well, actually, no. When you start the battle, all 26 skeletons spawn in. Equally, here are all of the enemies that we're fighting, the mushroom boys, and what I think are rat people with guns. Yep, sure, that's fine. What we're going to immediately do is just fire off a spell of curse. This allows us to curse some of the enemies, they take a bit of damage, but most importantly, when these mushrooms die, they're going to get resurrected as permanent undead units for us. And so the combat happens. You can actually kind of guide the combat around by directing your troops around by just grabbing, telling them to defend, ordering them to focus on, say, a particular enemy, so we can just say, go on, try and rush in and surround them here. And there we go. As you can see, we've actually gained some units. We've gained three rock walkers and two bone shooters. These are some actually pretty decent units. Of course, yes, we lost ten bone guard and one zombie, but ah, eh, who cares? And then 
at the end of the battle we have a choice. Do we raise some of the corpses we weren't able to turn into permanent undead into rock walkers by spending 8 mana or do we not? Now this is the game's balancing factor because necromancy is really overpowered but if you can make it so that raising the undead costs you a resource then people are less likely to raise the undead all the time and consequently not snowballed. There's just one issue, this can be exploited because you have the option of instead of raising the undead just draining the dead and gaining mana. So effectively necromancy provides you with an unlimited source of mana and then we can then use that same mana to curse living creatures and guarantee that when they die they return as undead. So immediately we're just going to upgrade our curse ability because our hero has leveled up. We'll also grab the ore quarry, grab all of the ore lying around and let's go and loot this treasure chest although we'll have to do that next turn. And so you end your turn all the other AIs do their little movement thing pretend to be intelligent you know. So we get a little chest we get the gold or the experience well we want experience because it's really really powerful. All right now it's the end of another turn so we can start upgrading our town again. We could start hiring vampires which are really really fun and overpowered but instead I'm going to pick up the stronghold here as this is going to allow us to increase a unit of choices growth each week. Now we have a few options we can either get more wraiths each week or just get an additional 27 skeletons and of course we're going for the skelly boys because skelly boys will make up the backbone of our army. They're cheap, they're chaff, they can die and it doesn't matter because at the end of the day there's going to be a lot of them. We've actually discovered a neutral army down here I think. Yep I can see one. It is rated hard but that does mean that I reckon we could still defeat them. Okay you know what we're going to give it a go. So we're fighting K Raz of Snake Spears. This dude has some lizards basically. He's level 4, he's a wizard so he's probably got some magic-y stuff on him. But luckily for us we can actually use his own troops against him. This is the power of an undead faction. Basically what we want to do is rush at high speed towards the enemy's ranged units, make sure we can get a curse on them and then we'll be able to re-resurrect them as undead. So let's just charge towards the ranged because when these guys die they're going to come back to life and instead fight for us. And as you can see we're starting to gain a few more bone shooters to fight for us. Fantastic stuff. And there we go there's another bone shooter that's just resurrected and they immediately spawn in and start attacking their previous comrades. Effectively we get to use the enemy's armies to you know fight for us and ooh it would appear the enemy has summoned in a large quantity of worms. Now worms pretty terrible unit. However we can curse them and even though they're a summoned unit when cursed when they die they will re-resurrect as a friendly unit to fight for us because that's 100% fair. Anyway glorious battle we won. Yes sure we lost a whole bunch of terrible units like the zombies are gone but hey we got a whole bunch of bone shooters for free. Ladies and gentlemen the fantastic boffins of Spivko have worked out something fantastic. The first 5,000 people to raise the bone on their finger and like this video will be guaranteed to receive immortality. Immortality might of course mean being resurrected as a bony boy and marching around absorbing shots to defend larger more valuable units but it is still immortality. So why not enjoy an eternal life of suffering today? After all it'll probably be better than the eternal life of suffering we're all currently living for anyway. Alright welcome back. A few turns have passed and we've managed to finally get ourselves a few of these lovely lichy boys. Now liches of course pretty powerful little guys but especially an upgraded lich where they have death strike they can summon a skeleton for every enemy struck by their attacks. As you can imagine that's pretty good. Oh also we've now learned a few spells like bless and um, death ripple which basically just murders stuff. But yes we're just gonna curse all these salamandry looking boys and then they get hit and of course when they get hit skeletons start spawning in. Oh look there's a skeleton just summoned. Well fantastic stuff as you can see um, this battle went very interestingly because we lost a single vampire and gained seven bone shooters and six bone guards. This is how battles are now gonna start going. We won't lose people we're just going to start gaining people. As you can imagine this is relatively completely and utterly broken. Now I know generally pretty much every Heroes of Might and Magic player by this point would have about 700 heroes ferrying units around the map but I just love playing this game with just a single giga hero that can do everything. All right now I'd like some more units in my army so we're gonna go and fight this group right here but just before we do we're gonna pick up the soul siphon because this means we now raise 40% of all creatures defeated in battle back as undead units that arrive at the soul beacon and then over time are gradually turned into units that we can just recruit for free from here. So we're gonna pick up the soul siphon and now we're gonna go and murder this army and the reasoning for us murdering this army is because guess what ladies and gentlemen they have 37 toad frogs. Now toad frogs of course aren't exactly very good they hardly have any health they hardly do any damage but of course that means for us we can just farm them so we're gonna hit a huge amount of them with curse and then we're just gonna kill them and every time one of these toad frogs die skeletons start spawning in. Yes it's very peculiar how that happens game very very weird indeed. So I'll just curse even more of the frogs and oh would you look at that we're gaining skeletons out of thin air. Fantastic stuff 29 of the frogs were defeated 
defeated and 18 skeletons are ours. Look, there's an actual neutral army right there for us to fight. Oh, okay, right, I want some reinforcement. I'm gonna hire as many of these skelly boys as I can. It's quite a lot because they're really cheap. Bam, there we go. We're now up to 92 skelly boys. All right, fantastic. I think this is a perfect army to go and murder some stuff with. All right, yes, now these guards are easy to murder, so uh, let's do it. So we want to take control of this outpost, basically. There's a few ways we can do that. The easiest way, of course, is just curse all of these shooters at the back and then hit them with some kind of spell to murder them. And then suddenly they all die and they come back as skeletons and now they're fighting on the other side for us. Lovely stuff. And would you look at that? We're gaining more units than we're losing. Hmm, isn't that weird? Oh no, it's almost like we can use enemies now to just fuel our army rather than losing troops. Oh no. I feel like we've become slightly too powerful now. All in all, that was a glorious battle. Our army has become even more powerful than it was previously. Oh my goodness, and look, it's Mandel Scepter. Oh, this is it, we want this. Okay, what, what is Mandel Scepter? Well, it's part of an interesting set where if you get three pieces of Mandel's gear, 25% of lost creatures return after combat. As you can imagine, really, really quite powerful. And oh my goodness, there's up to 100 penguins in this fight. We're gonna get so many skeletons, it's ridiculous. Okay, fantastic. Okay, this is gonna get very, very, very silly for one very simple reason. There's 88 penguins on this field of battle. Now, all of these penguins, we can turn into units. So let's do it. Let's start this battle. Right, immediately inflict curse on the penguins. Bam, they're cursed. Next up, Frostbeam. Every unit hit by this also get cursed. So we're bam. All of these penguins are now cursed. Oh no, you can start seeing the numbers going up now. You can really see them numbers go up now. Oh no, 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 no. Right, another ray of frost. And oh yes, more skeletons, more bone shooters. Oh no, penguins. Please, you've just fed my army. No, penguins, no. Oh no, we're up to over 100 skeletons now. Oh, fantastic. That was a glorious fight. And we get 13,000 experience and 15 mana. Why not? That's wonderful. Well, that was meant to be a hard fight, but actually it was the reverse of a hard fight because it just made us more powerful. I'm thinking we try attacking this sulfur mine here because there's a bunch of imps. All right, now we're going to curse almost all of these imps over here, then hit the others with an acid splash that will also curse them. We'll turn all of these dogs also cursed. There we go. Do even more acid splashes and fantastic stuff. We'll gain some units from them. Oh my goodness. Sorry, what is this? We spawned in Thanatos. What? It, I'm pretty sure this is the high level death dragon y thing. Like, this is the upgraded dragon of death. Yes, it is. Okay, right. It can fly, it can charge, it's ethereal, and it summons skeletons whenever it hits stuff. Okay, sure. That was amazing. And 25,000 experience as well. And 22 mana. Okay. Very, very nice. Very, very balanced. I guess I'll upgrade Master even more so my skeletons have even more power. Now, this destruction ability is actually incredibly powerful for us because it's a little bit silly. Whenever a creature in our army dies, they have a chance of casting a destructive spell onto the enemy. Now, when your army is comprised almost entirely of flimsy bone boys, and whenever they die, they cast a spell on the enemy which turns them into undead, you can imagine that this gets ever so slightly out of hand. And this is why I love the game. It's amazing. Other games would tell you, no, this isn't allowed. It's unfair. It's dangerous. It's broken. It's overpowered. This game just says, you should do it. All right, I think it's time for us to go on a little adventure. Firstly, we need to take over this gate, which basically means murdering a bunch of weird cats, or actually, we'll just skip to the outcome. There we go, okay, we only lost two skeletons, gained some XP, lovely stuff, gained some mana. Oh, and there's an ultimate shrine here, which will teach us an ultimate spell very well. We kind of have to do that then. So what if it means fighting 48 weird cats? We can do that. And there we go, fantastic. Pretty much all of the units on the enemy army are now cursed, so that when they die, they'll come back as ours. And we've only lost a few, you know, meaningless units. Oh, no, now they're summoning in the raccoons. Okay, right, fine. Hit them with the poison. That'll slow them down. I hit the ones at the top with a curse, and there we go. Glorious victory. Oh, we get to gain 20 mana. Lovely stuff. And even level up. Perfect. Okay, now let's learn an ultimate spell. Hypnotize. Okay, now that one does seem pretty useful. Okay, so we basically take control of an enemy unit and just make it wander around and do nothing. Alright, our hero has now actually reached level 20, which is really, really nice and powerful. We'll grab up this lovely relic. Now it's time for us to go and deal with this challenging fight over here against a whole bunch of crossbowmen. Alright, so time for us to take on all of these lovely crossbowmen. And oh, Oh, yes. They're only fielding 109 crossbowmen at the start. Okay, let's just curse them all. Curse all of the crossbow boys. Hit a load of them with an acid splash as well. Oh, it's gonna go so well. We can also frost beam them. Oh, yes. Look at all of the undead. Just 40 undead just spawn out of thin air. Oh, it's amazing. Oh, it's the best. We can just curse everything else that just spawned in as well. Hit them with a poison. Turn them into undead. Oh, yes. Look at that. 97 undead. Oh, it's glorious. It really is. Oh, it doesn't get better than this. 
And of course, when the skeletons die, they sometimes just explode and cast these destruction spells down upon the enemy, which of course curses them. It is ridiculous. It is silly. It is amazing. Well, there we go. That was a glorious victory. We lost 153 skeletons and gained 141. Uh, that was really something. That was really, really something. Oh my goodness, what a fight. Right, now there's a red portal over here, which I know will spit us out vaguely in the middle of the map right here, which I imagine is a good location to get to because there's probably decent bits of loot. So we're going to make our way down to the portal, engage in a fight, and try and make our way over to the center. There we go, fantastic. No casualties on our side, and we turned all of the enemy into units for us. Lovely stuff. Right, we'll grab some gold with this chest, and it's time for us to go into the center of the map, because it is exploration time. Now, what can we murder around here? Oh, we found an enemy hero. Lovely stuff. And also all these wonderful resource mines, including... <gasps> oh, we have to do this fight. It's filled with enemies. Oh, yes, it's filled with so many enemies and so many resources. Well, we get an incredible fight here, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to get an additional 1,000 gold per day for this fight, but the main reason we're doing it is so that I can have these 76 archers here absolutely decimate whatever the enemy is throwing at us, because we can just start the battle. I can immediately give all of them precision so that they can shoot really far. They will hit all of the enemy with a beam of frost, turning them into undead, and then we can summon in comets of fire. There we go, blowing up the enemy. Oh my goodness, so many casualties. All of them turn into undead, of course. We can fire off another death ripple over over here, turning stuff into the undead. Oh my goodness, this has gone fantastically well. Another beam of frost, there we go, throw the enemy around a bit. Rain of arrows, lovely stuff. Oh, glorious, glorious, glorious battle. Minimal casualties and gigantic profits, that's what we like to see. Okay, well our army's grown a fair bit, we've gained a lot more skeletons. Want a cloud palace? I wonder what's at the cloud palace, let's discover. Do we wish for war or peace? We can summon all enemy and friendly heroes across the map to this spot. I'm sorry, what? This is amazing! Okay, we're doing that. We're doing war. Okay, if with all of the enemy heroes summoned to this spot, that means all of their armies are here, which means all of their armies we can just convert into resources. This is brilliant. Okay, let's go murder them. All right, first fight. Lizard boys, let's go. Send some units back to reserves. Oh, this is going to be very fun. Do a death ripple. There we go. We can do another beam of frost. Turn some stuff into undead. Oh, this has just gone absolutely splendidly for us. Oh, you just couldn't really ask for a better fight like this. This was just glorious. Oh my goodness, and our reinforcements have decided to spawn in. Incredible and fantastic. Glorious victory for us. The enemy is defeated. 21,000 experience we gained and a whole bunch of mana. Well, that went well, so it's straight on to the next fight where we have to fight this guy who is apparently even more difficult, which means all of my range boys need to get precision put onto them and they need to just gank the enemy. Next up, we'll frost beam them. There we go. And just start weakening all of the enemy forces up like this. Lovely stuff. He is casting... Oh my goodness, he cast so many spells. He murdered all of my skelly boys. That's incredibly rude of him. Maybe I should start all fights by doing a magic arrow, just murdering the enemy hero. That's probably the easiest way to win most of the fights. There he is. Look, he's right there. Magic arrow. Bam. Dead. One shot. That's all it takes. Just one shot the enemy hero. Fantastic stuff. And whilst he's dead, he can't cast any of his dangerous magic that does bad things. Okay, now we're just going to have peace and have all enemy and friendly heroes go back to a town under their control. Lovely stuff. Oh, that is such a fantastic thing to find. Basically, we can just cause a thunder dome whenever we like. And this looks like <gasps> another Nick. Acropolis building? Okay, right, we're taking this. We're taking control of this town. It's a neutral town, but if we occupy it, I'm pretty sure that increases our necromancy abilities. It seems really silly and overpowered, but it's entirely possible. Right now, let us just start this glorious battle and break our way in. And we're just going to hypnotize the enemy army so that they just wander around and do nothing, allowing us to just walk straight through the front door and uh, murder all of them. Perfect. Well, they really can't do anything when they're hypnotized, can they? They're just literally the worst. <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. Right, well, that's the enemy we are we dead. Glorious victory and that's another town belonging to us. So now we're also summoning dead creatures to this soul beacon as well as summoning dead creatures to our own soul beacon back here. So I'm pretty sure that now means 25% of defeated enemies are getting raised in both of our undead cities which is kind of completely and utterly ridiculous but I love it. Oh my goodness they can recruit from the same pool as well. Oh dear oh dear oh dear this is quite powerful isn't it? Right, I'll spend a bit of mercury and I'm gonna end my turn and see what happens here. I think it's entirely possible we just recruit from both. Oh my goodness, we recruited a lot of units. Yep, okay. This is good. Yeah, this is good. I like this. This is very, very silly and powerful. So there were about 250 bone shooters there last time. We recruited 24 here, and we recruited 31 here. So yes, we can recruit from the same spawn of men and get them twice. This seems very jazzy. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We've completely and utterly broken this game. I really, really do love it. And if you actually want to try it out yourself, you can for free. That's right, this game has a free demo. What is the free 
demo, it's basically the first four factions of the game, including Necropolis, and you can play the entire thing. Legitimately, it's really, really good fun. I didn't expect to enjoy it anywhere near as much as I did. I think I spent about six hours yesterday just playing this until about midnight and having an absolute blast of it. Legitimately, really, really good fun, and it's free, so go check it out. I'll drop a link down to it in the description. If you want to get the full version of the game, but you don't have any money, hop onto the Discord. The developer's really, really generous. He was just handing out keys to the community for free, and I snagged one of them. It was really, really nice. So yeah, generally, if you enjoy the game and like the project as much as I do, make sure to go give them some help by playtesting their game and finding as many exploits as you can. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching my bony boys go on the largest bone crusade since your average American spring break party. As always, if you enjoyed watching, make sure to give the video a like, and why not hop on down to the comment section and pledge your undying allegiance to the bony boys. Also, if you have any other games where necromancy is involved, seriously, give me a shout, put it down in the comment section, because I love finding games with necromancy. They are so fun to break. So yes, help expand my knowledge of games. As always, a massive thank you to each and every one of our amazing patrons whose names you see on screen now. These lovely sausages make all of our videos all the more possible. Seriously, thank you very much, you majestic buggers. And hey, if you sat there wondering what video you'd like to watch next, well, look no further than this one on screen now, hand chosen by myself to be absolutely perfect for you. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have a lovely day and goodbye for now.